Okay, well, students, let's begin by talking about email communication and about spam, okay? I think that at this point in time, in this era, we're all familiar with spam. It's not exactly the spam musubi that we like, but it's part of our lives as well, right? So uh, we're gonna begin by talking about the good things and the features about email, and then we're gonna move on to spam and talk about how that can actually be bad for our computing experience and for our overall security and safety when we are on the internet. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, well, we know that the internet is mostly used for communication, right? We have talked about that, we have discussed different ways of communication, and one important thing that we have discussed is that the most used form of internet communication is um, its email. We actually took the time to discuss about this during our first session. We were talking about the different uses of the, of the internet and the web, you know, and we realized that, yeah, most people have email. They may not have a Facebook account, they may not have a cell phone, but email is something that we all can agree that is uh, part of our lives. It's like having a real home address. You know, you have an email address as well. There is always an, a, an expectation that you should have it because whenever you want to buy something or do something online, you know, many, many times you're hit with a question, okay, can you please enter your email address? So it is a need of these times. Let's continue. So let's define email. First of all, let's take a look and let's realize that it's just a message, a system for, to send messages from one person to another and all of these messaging takes place over telecommunication, meaning that it goes over the internet because remember the internet is a hardware part that makes part of, you know, that, that is the other part of the web. We have talked about this, we have said that the internet is a telecommunication, you know, the hardware, the stuff that you can touch, and the web is what lies on top, you know, that provides services such as email, okay? So we have, we have that email is very important and it's provided to us from the web. Now, I wanna, I wanna begin by comparing the email with the regular snail mail. Now, they, they now call it snail mail. Before it was just mail, but now it's so slow compared to email that they have called it, renamed it snail mail. So when you have your own address, you know, you know that there is like a zip code. There is, first of all, there is a, a country, okay? So whenever you're sending something, it goes to that particular country. Now, from that country, there is a state, if, if, if there are states in that particular country, there is within that, or a province, right? And inside that, there is a city. And inside that, there is an area, and usually you have a zip code, okay? Once you have that, you have a particular house that you have targeted, that's still not a complete snail mail address. It requires your name or the name of the recipient, that the person that is gonna get that message, okay? Well, if we think about it, that is gonna be exactly the same way in which email is gonna behave. It's gonna begin wide, like, oh, anybody in the world can have this email, and it's gonna narrow, narrow, narrow down until they find the actual recipient. And there is one other thing that we need to keep in mind. Just like your snail mail address is unique to you, there is nobody else with your exact snail mail address. You may say, well, you know, my brother lives with me, they have, we have the same one. No, because in reality it's not. You may have the same street address, but the one thing at the very top that is either your name or your brother's name. And that makes the address totally different because it's not just for that a particular message to arrive to a location but to be given to the specific person, you see? So that makes all our addresses unique, our, all, all our snail ma uh, mail addresses unique. So my address is very similar to my husband's and my daughter's but it's not quite there because my name is unique. Now, if you're in a family where everybody has the same name then probably you are in trouble, okay? But so is the post office. Let's continue. So let's take a look at how the email address breaks into pieces, okay? So we'll begin by checking that there is two parts in each email address, okay? The first part that we have is the username. Now, what we look at in here is actually my email address. So that's the username. 
And the second part is the domain name. We will be discussing domain names later on in more detail, okay? But for now, you can, let's do a loose definition and let's think of the domain name as the company or the provider name, okay? For example, my email says hawaii.edu and that means that, you know, my provider, my, my domain name is hawaii.edu because I teach here at, the, at UH, you know, in the, in, at Leeward Community College. So everybody that is in the UH system has a hawaii.edu address, so we're all in the same domain. Here is a rule, okay? If you have a username and a domain name, Within the same domain name, you cannot have two users' names that are the same. For example, I am Blanca at hawaii.edu. There is nobody else in the hawaii.edu domain name with that same username. They may be Blanca1, Blanca2, or Blanca99, whatever you want, but there is not going to be another person with my same email address. However, you know, my username could be the same, but I could have a different domain name. For example, I can be Blanca at hawaii.edu and Blanca at gmail.com and Blanca at yahoo.com and so on. That wouldn't be a problem because the uniqueness of the email address resides in both things being unique and when they are put together, make a unique email address. So let's think of this again. You may have in each domain name, there must be a unique username for each one of the users, okay? However, your username, you can use the exact same username in different domain names because it's okay, as long as that is not duplicate in any of the domain names that you are using email addresses from, you should be okay, okay? But in short, it is unique. That is why whenever you log in with your email address, they know that it's a credential that it's unique to you. And hopefully nobody has, um, hacked into it, right? Let's continue. Okay, so let's take a look at the components for an email, okay? First of all, we have the recipient's address, okay? That's very important. If you don't put the address, the recipient is not gonna get the email. So, very, very important. Second, you need the subject. You need to tell the person what your email is all about. Never leave it blank. Netiquette rules say do not leave it blank. It, you know, I personally look at subjects to decide if I'm going to read that email now or I'm going to read it later. So, and if it doesn't have a subject, definitely I'm going to read it later, not now. Then you have the message. Okay, of course, you cannot forget the message, but sometimes only you just want to send a picture, right? So, then you have the signature. The signature actually has uh, the sender's information, okay? So here is the deal. In, uh, in uh, the message, the message, we're thinking of the message as some text, right? But sometimes the message can come on the form of an attached document or an attached picture. That is not part of the slide where I'm talking about the different components of email, but attachments are very important. Now, if you have been using Gmail, for example, you know that if you mention in your email that, oh, I am attaching something, and you try to send it, and you forget to attach whatever it is that you're doing, they don't know what, but they, they know that your intentions were to attach something, you're gonna get a pop-up saying, hey, you didn't attach whatever it is that you were going to attach. Do you still wanna send the message, or you, or you wanna attach that? that document, right? So that is kind of cool because it reminds you to do those things and in the past we didn't have that. So it is useful but it also means that somebody is sort of spying on you, right? Because they know your intentions about attach, attaching something. I remember the first time that thing popped onto me I was like, whoa, that's not cool. You know, somebody's actually looking at what I'm doing and reading what I'm writing. This is kind of scary. So be careful with what you write. Okay, let's continue. So, um, when you read your email, there is two ways of doing it. You have the client-based email system like Outlook or Eudora for the Mac, and you have the web-based email system like Gmail, okay? So what is the difference between them? Well, it is simple. When you have a client-based email system, what happens is that the, the email actually downloads to your computer, 
okay it downloads and then you can read it from there you edit it but it's off the server it's right now in your computer so if you ever want to go back and look at that again you will actually have to go into that computer so it's cumbersome but it's a little bit safer because you download it and you know that it's in your computer and if you unplug your computer from the network you know it's safe right however for convenience, we're, we have grown very used to having email that it's web-based, that it can be accessed anywhere, namely the Gmail or the Yahoo Mail that you can access from anywhere. You can go, I can start reading email here at work, then I can go back and continue at, you know, at home and then continue over my phone and so on, okay? So the client-based email is gonna download within in your machine and that's the place where it's gonna reside and it's gonna be most likely deleted from the server. But there is options now that allow you to say, yeah, keep it in the server, but also download it here, okay? It requires a little bit more management. And in regards to the web-based email, it's very convenient, but it's always on the cloud. And who's watching the cloud? I don't know, hopefully somebody very responsible. Let's continue. So, well, let's talk about the bad stuff, okay? Spam or junk mail. Well, this is email that we don't want. It's all too familiar to us. You know, for, for us to get rid of it, we need to use spam blockers of, or filters. And there is a CAN spam act that says that you need the, whoever is marketing or sending you spam should provide you with a way to opt out, to say, hey, I don't wanna do that anymore. I, I don't wanna receive those messages anymore. Okay, so here is the deal. Junk or spam mail was actually first sent in 1978 by a, tele by a marketing guy from DEC Corporation, you know, Digital Equipment Corporation. He's, he found out some email addresses and he's, he spam, he sent an email uh, offering to sell some computer equipment, okay? This first spam in 1978 went in the ARPANET and it reached almost 400 people. Now, that is very little compared to the reach that some spam can have nowadays, okay? But as you can see, it's nothing new. 1978, probably some of you were not even born by then, okay? Let's continue. So what is the danger of spam? Well, uh, computer viruses may be attached to spam. They may be invisible, okay? So you have to be very careful and make sure that you know who's sending you the email what the email is about, you know, and make sure that you know the person that is sending it to you so that you feel free to actually open that. And do not ever reply to spam. If you reply to spam, people may think, sometimes if you reply, they are just like, oh yeah, this is a real email address. Let's keep on spamming this person. Okay, so don't reply to spam. Don't try not to render pictures within the email. That's also, if you can do without pictures, better. Another thing, uh, don't click on links, don't click on pictures, don't visit websites of people, that anybody that sends you email, and if you don't really know those people, please don't do that. It's gonna save you a lot of problems, okay? So that's all for uh, email and spam, so let's continue.